Praise the Lord. When the time for the Lord to return is actually here, which is fast approaching every day. Amen. Do you know where you're going when he shows up? Huh? Come on. Praise God. Praise God. That is a Praise blessing. God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, we're going to get into the word this morning. Praise the Lord. You got your Bibles. Turn to uh, Romans, excuse me, chapter 1. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh my. Oh my. Praise God. Romans oh my. chapter oh 1. Hallelujah, Jesus. Chapter 1. Oh, I'd like to say I was preaching out the beginning of Romans chapter 1, but we're preaching out of the back half of Romans chapter 1 today. Oh, praise God. If you got uh, verse 18, you can start with verse 18. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise oh, God. Praise God. Don't knock that yet. Come on. Praise God. Hang right in there. Romans chapter 1, verse 18, if you got it, say amen. amen. All right, as always, we'll have some scripture for you up on the board. And here we go. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Amen. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, Amen. his eternal power, and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. Well, we'll stop right there and pray. <laughs> Ooh, Lord Jesus, we need you today. Help me, help me this morning. Pray with me. Dear Lord God. Lord, we thank you, God. We praise you, God, for all that you have done, Lord God. We thank you for us being able to be here, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you most importantly that you're here today, God. Lord Jesus, your word is here today, God. Lord, we're going to hear from it, Lord God. We're going to receive it, Lord Jesus. I pray that if we need changed, we'd be changed this morning, God. I pray, Lord God, that if we need healed, we'd be healed this morning, God. I pray, Lord, if we need to be delivered from something, that the chains would break off, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would do all that you want to do in this place, God. Oh, Lord, have your way totally and completely, Lord God. Oh, speak to us, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let this message go forth and accomplish all that you have plans for it to accomplish, God. And Lord, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. All right. Here we go. As always, we're going to go back over it a little bit. <coughs> you can direct your attention to the Screen behind me, I'm going to be reading from scripture, but there's going to be some stuff up here. We're going to stop every so often and talk about it. But we're going to let the word of God really just speak for itself. Amen. Okay? There'll be some preaching, of course, some teaching, of course. But you know, the word of God really is very plain and obvious. Amen. When it comes to things like this, there's... Really not much need for explanation, but we're going to go. Here we go. Verse 18, it says, But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. You know, there's some people that say God doesn't get angry. He doesn't show judgment. He doesn't judge people. He don't do none of that. They claim to be Christians. They claim to be leaders in our country. They claim that they're living a life of sin and get saved at the same time. The Bible says God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Amen. Saying God doesn't judge nobody, that's suppression of the truth. That's right. And that's wickedness. Verse 19. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, People have seen the earth and sky. You know, we just celebrated Earth Day. We do it once a year. Ooh, they get all excited. People do all kinds of stuff getting excited about this world. But they just skip right over the Creator. We're going to move on from that. That's right. That's right. Forever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see 
his invisible qualities. It's all, <clears throat> with all your education, with all your power, can you create a blade of grass? No. no. Yeah. How about a tree? No. How about a cloud? No. With everything that you have, all the money in the world, can you make the wind blow the direction you want it to? No. Can you change the storm? Create it or make it dissipate? No. no. Create a drop of water? No. no. Interesting. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. <coughs> yes, they knew God. Notice that was past tense. Yeah. All of a sudden we go from knowing God to knew God. They knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. Foolish ideas. Foolish ideas. Go back for, for me one time, son. Jesus was a false prophet up here in 2020. Jesus, the first transgender man, 2017. Seven reasons Jesus was gay, 2013. Go ahead, son, give me the next one. Church depicts Jesus as gender queer with breasts, a beard, and makeup, so everyone sees themselves in Christ, September 23rd, 2020. There he is. I don't know who that is, but it's supposed to be Jesus. Huh. I'll read it again. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. Foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Hmm. Think these people are a little confused? Yeah. Think they're a lot of confused. We just want everybody to see themselves in Christ. You, you got that backwards. Christ needs to live in me. Amen. Christ needs to be in my heart. Christ needs to be in my life. I need to be chasing after what he looks like, not him chasing after what I look like. Come on. I need to model myself after who Christ is. Not change Christ to look like me. Christ ain't some 38, 39, whatever year old fat guy with arthritis. <laughs> that ain't who Christ is. Come on. Christ is our Savior. Christ is the one who crawled up on the cross and died for our sins. Christ was a Jew. Oh, wow. The Son of the living God. Amen. And came down here and took what was the separation of Jew and Gentile and created one people under Christ. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Now the only separation is the saved and the unsaved. Mm. Wow. Those going to heaven and those going to hell. Wow. They became confused. Thinking up foolish ideas. Their mind became dark. Verse 22. Claiming to be wise... They instead became utter fools. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. This was on YouTube. I looked it up real simple. This one verse proves Jesus lied. Six months ago, 72,000 views. Wow. This over here, evilbible.com, Jesus lied. He lied about prayer. Wow. They instead, <clears throat> excuse me, wow. verse 22, claiming to be wise. That, that young fellow, if you watch his video, I don't recommend it unless you're strong enough to not be led astray. But <clears throat> it's up there. It's on YouTube. There's the header of it. You're allowed to, I mean, by all means, go after it. He said he was raised in church. Claims he was raised in church. And yet, He's completely confused. I listen to what he had to say. He has no idea what the Bible says. He's as lost as lost can be. And I don't know. That's a, I don't know what that symbol is behind him. He, he reminds me of maybe a, a, a witch or a warlock. Gandalf the Grey. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm just, yeah. just throwing it out there. Yeah. Cool. Anyhow. You shall not pay. Whatever. Okay, we're going. 
Claiming to be wise, they instead become utter fools. If you listen to his video, you'll realize he has no idea what he's talking about, though he's trying to teach you that the Bible is wrong, and instead he's lost as lost can be. Verse 23, and instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols, made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful thing their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. They worshiped the creation instead of the Creator. Again, we just celebrated Earth Day. This was in October 2020. The Vatican comes out with a, a Mother Earth coin. There, there she is with the, with the Earth as her baby. She's pregnant. Her name is Gaia or Pacamama. I'm, but, I'm butchering that. But there, there's the idol. Right there it is. The idol of Mother Earth. M Mother Earth. Wow. No. They worship the creation instead of the creator. They worship birds and animals and trees and nature. Wow. You understand that's the Pope up there. You understand that's the Vatican. That's supposed to be a, a, a guy who's supposed to know the word God. That's supposed to be somebody who's a religious leader that's supposed to be leading thousands to who Jesus is. And instead, he's over there worshiping Mother Earth. Coming out with coins about Mother Earth. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. That seems to explain itself. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Wow. That, that list up there, that has a plus behind it because it goes on and on and on. They keep adding letters to it. You know, to be all inclusive, they separate you. Divides you into your, <laughs> into your list, into your letter. And I don't know all the different symbols down, down here. Some of them got two symbols on themselves instead of just one. I, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> women with women and men with men. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking. And let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed. That's uh, Planned Parenthood, if you understand what that symbol is up there. We zoomed in as best we could. They're celebrating Planned Parenthood. Protect women's health. You know, because aborting babies is somehow protecting women's health. Now, if the baby's a woman, we don't want to look at that. If it's a female baby and we kill her, well, but anyways, we'll move on from the logic there. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand. Come on. They refuse to understand. They refuse to understand. Break their promises, are heartless, 
and have no mercy. Wow. That first picture was Minneapolis, Minnesota, burning to the ground. They refused to understand. The next picture was looting and robbing, stealing, mm -hmm. vandalizing. I'll read it one more time. It says, they are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promise, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyways. Worse yet, they encourage others to do it as well. You know, this, this last one here, in case you can't quite see it, those are children, children, children. Wow. You know, I used to take that last verse about encouraging others to do it also as getting with your friends and encouraging your friends to drink with you, encouraging your friends to party with you, encouraging the people that were around you to come and hang out with you and rob things with you and beat up people and do the terrible things that we just read about. But then I came across these pictures and I thought, oh, well, yeah, those are adults encouraging others to do them also. Those are adults who have lost their way, according to Romans chapter 1, that they've turned themselves over to the things that ought not to be, and yet they're encouraging others to do the same thing. They're raising the little ones up to live a Romans 1 mentality. Guys, there's a, a Romans 1 spirit that has been turned loose on America. You saw all those articles I showed you that some of them went all the way back 2017, 2013 even. Some of them as recent as just six months ago. There's a Romans 1 spirit that is loosed on America. We have people that are intolerant in a sense that they don't want to listen or even understand. Not that they're not tolerating how people want to live. No, this is America. You're allowed to come and live any way you want. As long as your freedoms and as long as the way you live doesn't overstep my freedoms and the way I'd like to live, then we have the government step in. That's what the police are for. That's what the, the, the government rules and laws and constitutions are for. You have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and so do I. And when my pursuit of happiness steps on yours, then we call somebody and say, hey, um, I need some help. And the cops step in and they make a decision. The cops step in and arrest somebody or step in and do what needs to be done to try to save somebody, to try to stop somebody from doing wrong. And then when you see it on TV, when you see it on the news, they refuse to understand. They refuse to stop and listen to logic. They refuse to say, I'll wait and we'll see what happens in the court system. We'll see if justice is served. No. No, that's not what we saw all year, all summer. We saw people that were haters of God, people that were proud, people that were boastful, people that were heartless and had no mercy, people that refused to understand. Right there, Romans 1. That's right. right there it is. Right there. And then even after verdicts came out, Come on now, I'm talking about George Floyd and, and Derek Chauvin. Let's just make it plain and simple who I'm talking about. Even after verdicts come out, they said it's not enough. That's not justice. We gotta keep going. We gotta burn the whole system to the ground. Hold on, I thought somebody found was found guilty. I thought punishment was coming. I thought 40 years is what this man was getting. No. But we gotta burn it to the ground. How come you don't understand? If you shot me and was found guilty, you go to prison. That's justice. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want that. Come on, guys. 
There's a, a spirit of Romans 1 loosed on America. And I've heard so many times, time and time again, the church needs to step up. The church needs to say something. The church needs to come out. The church needs to speak. They're too quiet. Well, we're speaking. Repent. Yeah. Turn to God. Yeah. Or else you're going to be described in Romans 1. Where God eventually turns you over to what King James says is a reprobate mind. Change your ways. Stop being hateful and disobedient and insolent. Turn to God. Repent. Change your mind. Repent is to turn from what you were doing. To change your way of thinking. I used to think it was fun to go out and party and drink and get drunk and pray to the porcelain god later on that evening or even the next morning. Bow down and worship the toilet as I puke my guts out. You know what? I had a change of thinking. <laughs> I had a change of heart. Decided that's probably not good. Lord, please deliver me from this. And you know what he did? Amen. Because God is faithful to do that. We have a, a couple of problems in America. The, the church is being silent in some forms because they're afraid to offend. They're afraid that when they come to church, there'll only be a couple of people there because everybody else will leave. The Bible says if we don't tell them the blood's on our head, if we don't proclaim the gospel when we're supposed to, then that blood is on us. We're held accountable. I'm held accountable. Every pastor and preacher and evangelist across this nation, if they keep their mouth shut and don't say, repent, sin will take you to hell. There's heaven to gain and a hell to get rid of. Stop sinning. Or you're going to hell. And instead, if they say, well, it's okay. We, we don't. We don't, we don't preach about sin here in church. We, we know people make mistakes. People have issues. People have, you know, things, situations. And we just want to love on folks. And we just want to tell them how good life is. If they just let God just, just be so good. And now if you give your 10% here, you'll prosper. <laughs> And you'll just, the windows of heaven will open and God will just bless you. All you got to do is give and come to church. No. Wow. Wow. See, we, we have Christians that go to church into these, some of these churches, even churches, come on, right here, right here, right here, New Life Temple. If you come to Sunday service, you're here for maybe an hour, maybe two. Depends on if you come to Sunday school. If you come on Wednesday night, you're here again for another hour, maybe two. Depends on how good of revelation it is to. So we get you for two to four hours a week. And then what? CNN gets you the rest of the week. Fox News gets you the rest of the week. YouTube gets you the rest of the week. Facebook gets you the rest of the week. Instagram, uh, TikTok, Parlor. I, what, pick, pick your poison. And then when we see things out in the world, like the pictures we just saw, we got Christians repeating the CNN talking points or the Fox News talking points instead of the Bible talking points. Why? Because the Bible's last on our list. I gotta read Twitter before I can read the Word. I gotta go check out what people are saying on whatever my favorite YouTube show is or Fox News or Come on. We got Christians that can repeat the conservative or liberal talking points way better than they can tell you a single verse in the Word of God. Christians. At least they confess to be. We started off with one that confessed to be a Christian. Put his name and his face right up there. 
You two might not let us stay. It's okay. We'll see. Go ahead and give me that current events picture, son. This one, this one, come on, this is fresh. This is fresh. We know this stuff because it's fresh. Here in North Carolina, we've, we've had a shooting in North Carolina over there in Pasquotain County, Elizabeth City area. Seven cops are on leave. So a man was shot, an unarmed black man was shot. You, you know what would fix this situation right here? Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know what would fix this situation right here? Jesus. Amen. You know what would change that whole situation? The word of God. Amen. Not cable news, television, not YouTube, not any app on your phone. The word of God. Repent, repentance of sin. Listen, everybody, everybody involved in all of these pictures, what would help them? A relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on. That's where the church is spreading. That's where the church is being silent. We're offended or afraid to offend somebody even in our own house. Even in the house of God, we're afraid to preach against sin, let alone when we step outside these walls. We're afraid to say, you know, you keep living that life, you're going to go to hell. You know, you keep taking those drugs, there's going to come a day when you may not be able to get up. You know, you keep having that pride and think that you know everything, one day you might hurt somebody. That's right. Come on, you, you think you're so proud, nobody can talk to me like that. Well, one day you might do something and get shot. Oh, then it's too late. It's too late for a couple of people up here in these pictures. Their life is over. I'm pretty sure right now, wherever they are, they wish to God somebody would have told them about Jesus Christ a whole lot sooner. They wish they had changed their life, repented, and turned from their sin a whole lot sooner. They'd be alive today otherwise. We can debate who would be alive if they would have just done this, if they'd have just not taken these drugs, if they'd have just not been this criminal, if they'd have just not had this knife, if they'd have just not, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they would have just been saved, Amen. if they would have just turned their life over to Jesus, Amen. if they would have just forgiven like they were supposed to, if they would have just lived and repented like they were supposed to. Amen. And then no matter what happened to them, they would end up in heaven. <clears throat> Come on. Well, Pastor, you, you've never been in that situation. You, you, you've never had such anger you wanted to stab somebody. You've never had drugs in your system and tried to pass off phony money to buy cigarettes or whatever it was he was buying. You've never had such pride in your, in your life that people told you, hey, you might want to set that man up. And you were like, no, I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. You've never been filled with such Pick your poison. I don't know. Let's see what the Word of God says about that. Son, going over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheap people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that. Let's bring that home. Some of us That's wrong. were once like that. We used to be on that list. But you were cleansed. Hold on, you mean there's hope? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. But you were cleansed. You were made holy. Oh, praise God. Amen. You were made right with God Amen. Amen. by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ 
and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. You came up and got saved and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. And then there was this Holy Spirit, this comforter, this one that leads you and guides you to all truth. That by the Spirit of the living God, he was able to change you, cleanse you, give you victory over that anger, give you victory over that sin, give you victory over that uh, sexual sin or idolatry or adultery or being a prostitute or a homosexual or a thief or a greedy person or a drunkard or abusive or a cheat. You used to be one of these, but God changed you. If only somebody would proclaim this gospel, this good news. If only there was a place people could go to hear such a message. Amen. Amen. If only America would wake up on Sunday morning and come to church where the gospel's being preached week in and week out. Amen. Amen. And if only the church would go out there Monday through Saturday and live and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Say, hey brother, I know it's Monday and you got a hangover, but let me tell you something that's better than alcohol. His name is Jesus. Amen. Hey brother, I know you're going through some stress right now. You're thinking about maybe ending it all. Coming in here, I, I've heard you talk about it. If I only had a gun, I'd come in here and shoot every one of these people. And, you know, let me tell you somebody who can take that stress away, who can take that anxiety away, who can change that hate into love, who can let that bitterness become forgiveness and it'll be washed away. That weight that's weighing you down every day will be gone. His name is Jesus. Amen. That person with low self-esteem that we meet because they had such a past they're ashamed of. They're so weighed down by things that they've done. They just they have no confidence in themselves. They can say, hey brother, you know, somebody hung on the cross and took your shame. That's right. Somebody went and was nailed on the cross. They spit on him. They slapped him. They put a crown of thorns on him. And he hung up there half naked in shame just for you. Amen. So that now you can walk with boldness and confidence. Knowing that you're a son of the living God. You're a daughter of the king. Amen. You're a child of God. Amen. And your shame has been wiped away. Guys, the fight is not over. I know we are looking for the return of Christ any day now. That's right. Any day now. But there is a gospel that needs to be proclaimed. There is a good news that needs to go forth. It comes straight from the word of God. And it's the only thing that's going to save our nation. It's the only thing that's going to save our neighbor. It's the only thing that's going to change people's lives and get them out of the mess that they are in. Not a political party, not a political leader, not a certain amount of money, not a rebate check, not shopping somewhere, not being affiliated with something, not being a, a, a member of Instagram or, or something. No. It's Jesus. Amen. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's it. Somebody's got to tell them. We preach the gospel here. We put it out on YouTube for people to see. We come and preach the end times on Wednesday. We put it out on YouTube for people to see. We ask you to share it with as many people as you can share it with. But in the end, it's still up to each and every one of us.
That's right. To go out and share this good news. To say, hey, the Bible says I used to be where you are. We just read it. We were like that, but then we were changed. We were cleansed. We were set free because we called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Don't you want to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with me? Don't you want to be cleansed? Don't you want to be set free? Oh, come on. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Oh. And he'll change your life.